go. When we are bitten by life unexpectedly, it can often cause damage beyond recognition. And the truth of the matter today is that many of us are living our lives out of the eye, didn't see that coming experience. The perspective says no, your faith will say that God is still fighting for me. That when your perspective tries to convince you that you are down and out, your faith will remind you that it is God who has all power in his hands, who is still working things for you. Say it again. The assertion of the fact that mercy is present means this, y'all. Without the existence of mercy, the outcome would be different. Meaning if mercy wasn't present, it would be another way. But Jeremiah says that because of the Lord's mercies, which now means that we have to shift our outlook and it has to be Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? And welcome into another week, another episode, another moment of the Friday night. Fill up, it's your girl. I'm Marissa Farrow, and we are back for week three of the Friday Night Fill Up. If this is your first time joining us, I want to say welcome. I want to um, extend my deepest gratitude that you are spending your Friday night with us. And if by chance you are not watching this on Friday night, we still want to welcome you. And on top of that, I want to welcome you to like and subscribe this channel so that you can stay connected to everything that we put out here, all the content and all the exciting news that is coming up. If you are joining me for the first time and you just so happy happen to be here and don't know um, how you ended up here. My name is Marissa Farrow and I am honored that you stopped by my channel. I have a new book that is out on Amazon right now entitled The Morning Cup and if you don't have it, you can get it today by going on Amazon, putting that name in, Marissa Farrow, The Morning Cup. It's a 21-day prayer devotional and we would love to take you through that journey with us. You can also join our online community on Instagram by following me at Marissa Farrow and there you can pray with us every morning um, with a, a community of believers who gather there to um, gather together as community and to pray to kick off our day to start our day to um, enhance our morning and so that's what we do so I'm excited that you are here for the Friday night fill up the opportunity that we have to dive into the word I am excited that you are here and most of all I'm excited because you are not coming here on E you are coming here with the expectation right I pray that this week has not drained you I pray that this week has not depleted you I pray that this week has developed you because I pray that you've been able to look to the hills from which come with your help I pray that this week you've been able to watch God handle an enemy a problem an attack that has been trying to handle you. I pray that this week has been a week for you to know God in a different way. And so um, while you're here tonight, let's pray as we kick off this moment. Father, we thank you for the opportunity that you've given us. Thank you for allowing us another moment to dive into your word. I pray now that you would illuminate, that you would inspire, that you would enlighten, that you would cause us to leave from this moment better than what we came. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on wherever my brother, my sister may be right now. I thank you because I believe right now that they are being transformed by the power of your word in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. So welcome in again. And I'm excited because this week I have um, felt what has been the tug of God on my heart. I'm trying to tell y'all, I, uh, the other day I kept waking up out of my sleep. Like it was literally one of those moments. I was like, Oh my God, I keep waking up out of my sleep. And I kept hearing Genesis 12, one in my spirit. Not, I, I didn't even know that that was the specific, um, map direction, GPS locator for the scripture. I just knew, um, that I just kept hearing the Lord uh, and his call to Abraham. And that has been on my heart and on my mind this week. And so this week I want to deal with um, something that maybe we should all ask ourselves. Do you really trust God like that? Uh, that might be a good question for all of us to start at a point for all of us to begin to, to uh, find out about the narrative our, of our motivation for our Christendom and our, our our belief in God, our faith in him. Do we trust God like that? So Genesis 12 and 1 through verse 2. I mean, we could literally take this for an entire series and I'm not going to let y'all quote me, but I may come back to this because I really want to dive further into this, but I only have real time to deal with Genesis 12, 1 through 2. And from the NIV version, it says, the Lord had said to Abraham, go from your country, your people, your father's household to a land that I will show you. That's the part that the Lord kept waking me up in here. And I kept saying to a land that I will show you. I kept thinking to myself, God, what kind of faith does it take to trust God to leave, to go to a place where he would show you a place that you have no idea uh, as to where you are going? Can you trust God with um, what he's trying to show you? Uh, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. 
I will make your name great and I will bless you to be a blessing. The Amplified Version says now in Haran, the Lord said to Abram, go away from your country and um, from your relatives and from your father's house to land that I will show you and I will make you a great nation. I will bless you abundantly and I will make your name great, exalted, distinguished, and you shall be a blessing, a source of great good to others. You can read that in multiple translations because you know here I have been admonishing you um, to read that in multiple translations. But I want you guys to start thinking about um, Genesis chapter 12, 1 through 2 as we dive into this 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 lesson this question do you trust god like that so y'all background as i started looking at this text i started looking um and doing my background research on it on on abram mind you because when we are dealing with this call in this specific moment in genesis chapter 12 verse 1 we are not dealing with abraham father abraham um as he has not yet been uh called into that transformative moment where his name is changed from abram to abraham but god is calling abram and i think that's important to understand because when we think about the background of Abram and even the need for God's call to Abram, right? If we take this a step further into those of us who have been in Christian education for a long time, we're going to take this pathway and follow this rabbit hole down into the Abrahamic um, promise and the covenant that was made to Abraham. But think about it, right? You have the, the creation of man, then you have the fall of man, right? And now you have um, the, the flood and Noah and the ark, right? And now God repopulates the earth, right? And now here comes this call um, to Abram, right? This moment where God is beginning this redemptive work, right? So the fall of man uh, caused this connection from God, sin entered into the world, and then God now gets frustrated. He destroys the earth. He repopulates the earth. And now here comes this need for new promise and new covenant. And so this is a part of the redemptive work of God. He begins to call this man Abram. Now, what's so important about this is, and why we should understand that Abram is who he's calling, Abram is a part of um, a earlier uh, society, right? Uh, an earlier structure of society in earlier Mesopotamia, right? And he and his family are from uh, the city, um, which is known as the Ur of the Chaldeans, right? Y'all can look that up and that's Ur as in you are of the Chaldeans, C-H-A-L-D-E-A-N-S, right? And if you look that up, you will find out that the people who were settled there earlier um, were people who were involved in pagan and idol worship, right? So Abram is born into a family where he's accepted the truth of his background, right? So he's born into idol worship. And I loved when I was reading this particular um, narrative on it, it says, even still God called him. I love that because for somebody who's watching this right now, who says I was born into some crazy stuff. I was born into some backgrounds that don't line up with the truth of who God is. I'm seeking to try to find out who God is now in, in my, in my, my latter stages. And I didn't come from this type of background. Well, neither did Abram for 99 years of his life, he answered to the name Abram. And then God came, changed his name to Abraham, right? Meaning at any stage and at any place and out of anything, God will call you. God literally called him even so, even though he was born into a family of pagan worshipers. He may have never been exposed um, to the truth of God, for, of who God is for all we know, right? But in this moment, even still in Genesis chapter 12, 1, God calls him out of where he's from. And I just want to give that to somebody tonight because maybe you've been feeling like God can't use you because of what you were birthed into. No, when God has an anointing on your life, the anointing and the call of God is bigger than what you were birthed into. It doesn't matter how bad what you were birthed into is, right? You may have been born into a family of witches. Come on here. God will call you out of darkness into the marvelous light and so i love the call of abram because it gives us the opportunity to see god call the uncommon the unordinary the unexpected right and so god calls abram in genesis chapter 12 and this is what i love even more about it we don't see that abram seeks god god seeks abram mm, 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 mm. god have mercy that ought to have encouraged somebody right now who feels like you are beneath the call of god god is approaching him I think that when we start looking at the privilege of the call of God, we will begin to take the call of God with more humility in our lives. God came to Abram, this man who was birthed into this family of idol worshipers in this country full of people who don't even know who the truth of God is, yet God called him. Your background ain't bad enough to stop the call of God on your life. What you've come out of ain't big enough. It ain't deep enough. It ain't, it ain't wrong. Nothing can cause the call of God to miss your life. God calls Abram out of the shadows of darkness 
and he approaches him. Abram's not seeking God. God seeks Abram. That's what I love about this, right? So the Bible tells us, um, and for those of you who are look who are wondering, and I just want to give you scripture because I love to give scripture with everything. Joshua 24 and 2 will give to us some proof and evidence of the root of um, Abram's family and the, the generations that he comes from, right? Joshua said to the people, this is what the Lord God of Israel says, long ago, your ancestors included in Tere, the father of Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates River and worshipped other gods. There's the proof right there. For those of you who need biblical reference, Abram was born into a family of pagan worship, right? But still God called him. And that's the point that I want to emphasize tonight, but still God called him. I want someone to be encouraged to believe tonight that no matter what you grow up in, when God has an assignment on your life, he will meet you in whatever condition you are in. Right. And so nevertheless, Genesis chapter 12, one, God calls Abram. Okay. So God calls Abram. And now this is the, the fun part of it. This is the crux of it. This is the meat of it. The nature of the call. The Lord says to Abram, get thee out of thy country. When you start looking at that in, in multiple translations, you would look at that call and that initial right call, that initial reaction from God, get thee out. You would look at it with some level of emphasis because um, other versions of it would say that God is emphasizing himself to Abram. Get thee out. It's a call to alert. He's telling them to get thee out. I don't even know who really needs to hear this tonight, but maybe the call of God to you has been to get out, right? To get out of where you are, right? And in this specific scripture, the Lord says, I want you to get out of your country. I want you to get out of your, from your kindred. I want you to get out of your father's house. Right. And so when we start diving into this question that we're asking ourselves tonight, do you trust God like that? The call that God is making to Abraham is one that requires him to leave his level of comfort. The first question that I want to raise to you about, do you trust God like that is, do you trust him enough to leave what you're comfortable with? Not only is he comfortable, but imagine this, Abram is in his father's house. I'm sure that he's not just comfortable, but I'm sure he's also sustained, supported, and established. So the question is, can you trust God to leave something that not just feels, that not, that not only feels comfortable to you, but something that feels safe and secure to you? The Lord says to Abram, I want you to come away from everything you're familiar with. Do you know that sometimes God can only develop you when you are disconnected from what you're familiar with? Do you know that sometimes God can only show you and expose you to the depth of who you are when you are willing to disconnect from the things that hold you up? Because sometimes we use the things that hold us up to enable us and disable us from discovering our own strength. Sometimes God has to call us away from the things that secure us and put us on shaky territory. And this is shaky to me because he says, I want you to come to a land that I'm going to show you. So it's shaky because the reality is he doesn't even know where he's going. You want me to leave a place where I got a roof over my head. You want me to leave the place where there's food on my table. You want me to leave the place where I know that I'm going to get a meal every night and I'm going to have a covering every day to go to a place where you are going to show me. There is a call to transition that is not just happening in the kingdom abroad, but I believe that there is a call to transition that might be happening on your very life right now. The person who is hearing this message. And maybe that transition for you is not a physical move. Maybe the Lord is calling you to spiritually move away from the things that you feel comfortable with. Maybe the Lord is calling you into deeper territory. Maybe the Lord is calling you to cast out your net. Maybe the Lord has been calling you to make a shift from the things that you know you find dependence on that do not glorify God. Because sometimes we find dependence in things that are idol worship to God. Maybe the Lord is calling you away from what you're familiar with. He says, I want you to come away from where you are in order to see the plan of God exposed in your life. You've got to be willing to make a move. I preached about this a couple of weeks ago at New Birth. Do something, make a move, get up, be willing to go somewhere, be willing to trust the plan of God on your life. And I'm telling you that in this season, it, this word just keeps coming to me. I don't know who this is for. I, I can't speak for you, but I'm going to give it to you in, in, in hopes and in prayer that if it meets you where you are, you feel like I feel in the spirit and it's time for us to make a move. Saturday, I was at a, a, at a consecration service, an ordination service, and the spirit of the Lord began to speak in that room and 
it started talking about revival that is coming to the kingdom. Let me tell you something. The Lord has been dealing with me because I have become comfortable in my position when the reality is that as a leader, as a voice in the kingdom, we collectively, I don't know who I'm talking to. This is just dropping on me as I'm going. This literally may be some pastor, some leader who's out there who's been wrestling and you've been focusing on all the things that really don't matter no more. And because you're distracted by the small things, we are not ready in our hands for revival. The world is in need of revival. The people of God are in need of revival. The people are hungering for revival. There is a generation that is seeking the Lord for revival. I don't care what the news and the media tries to portray. I'm telling you, there's a generation out here that's seeking the Lord for real revival, revival fire, revival of the Holy Ghost, revival of the power of God, revival of the miracles of God. We seek to see the miracles of God because we believe in the miracles of God. And so I believe that the reality is that we are all being called to a level of transition right now. I want to admonish you to not be afraid of transition because God is showing to us that sometimes triumph must come through transition. Abram would have never been exposed to the fullness of the promise and the blessing that is on his life until he trusted God in transition. You've got to be willing to trust God in transition. Abram would have never understood the fullness of the promise. He would have never been been able to hear the promise, nevertheless to live in the blessing of the promise had he not been willing to trust God with the transition. I want to tell somebody today that you got to trust God with the transition. Not only do you have to trust God with the transition, but you got to trust God with the uncomfortability of the transition. Here's the second part. He says, I'm going to take you to a place where I'm going to show you. This was deep for me. I'm going to take you to a place. Matter of fact, not even I'm going to take you. He didn't even say, I'm going to take you. Let's go back to Genesis 12. One. I want to read it again. Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, from thy father's house. Go to a land that I'm going to show you. He's putting the responsibility on Abram. Go to the land that I'm going to show you. Not I'm going to carry you to the land that I'm going to show you. Go to the land that I'm going to show you. What kind of guts does it take to allow God to send you to a place where you've got to make up the direction in which you move? That would require you to be able to hear from God with such a keen spirit and a keen nature. Because literally your first move will have to be in the direction of destiny. Oh my God. Abram, do you know which way you're moving? No, but I know that I have to move in the direction of destiny. Oh my God. I don't even know which way that is. If it's north, if it's south or it's east or it's west. But my, I got to trust that the God of my spirit is going to move me in the direction of destiny. So I just got to start walking. I don't have a map. I don't have a GPS. Abram, get up and go. Just go. Just start walking. And it really, as I'm watching this, this play out between God and Abram. Y'all, I'm a Marvel fan. So this, I grew up in, I'm an 80s baby. I grew up in 1989. So hello to all the people who are looking at me show my age. Okay. So it, there's this episode of this movie. I think it's one of the Wolverine series. And at the end of it, they send the major, the guy, the major is always in the stuff. Major somebody, Colin, Colonel, somebody. They send him, there's a, one of the girls has a power, you know, superpower to make this guy just start walking. He said, she just walk. And he just, he's walking. And I just see him walking. Can you imagine Abram leaving this established place in early settlement of society and saying, I'm just going to go. And we are standing here with GPS maps, Google Ways, and everything else. And we trying to figure out if we can trust God. This is a spiritual thing. He has to trust that his spirit is so connected with God that the direction that he moves in is going to be the direction of destiny. I'm talking to somebody who has been struggling because your spirit is disconnected. When God calls you, you got to be in alignment to be able to follow the direction of God. There has to be a level of alignment and discernment that comes naturally, right? You can only hear the call if you have a level of clarity in the beginning. Now, let me tell you something. When I say clarity, I'm talking about clarity in the spirit. You might not even have clarity in your surroundings, but I'm talking about clarity in the spirit. Your spirit is so in tune with God. You're so sure of your salvation and your connection to your relationship with God that whenever the Lord speaks, I don't care if he arrests you in the middle of a nightclub, you're going to hear the Lord. Come on. I'm talking about the person whose life is parallel to Abram coming out of a dark place. 
but I still heard the call of God and I'm so connected that I trust him enough to start moving and start walking. Even if that means I got to disconnect from my friends, that's my direction right now. If that means that I got to spend some time in solitude, that's the direction right now. If I got to sacrifice some time to disconnect from the things that make me feel like I'm less lonely because now it's time for me and God to start dealing with me and the realities of who I am, then that's what I'm doing right now. But are you willing to make a transition? That's the question. Transition is the theme of the text. He has to trust God in transition. And here's what I like about it. By the time we get to the place where the Lord says, unto a land where I show you, here's what I wrote down. I want to give this to somebody. Sometimes you got to make the move before the move makes sense. That's what, that was one of the revelations the Lord dropped in my spirit. He says, go to the land that I'm going to show you. Sometimes you got to be willing to make the move before the move makes sense. I don't know who I'm talking to right now who's been stuck in trying to figure out what move to make. Sometimes you got to just be willing to make a move and you got to let God make sense out of the move. That's what he says. I'm going to go out of how Thank you. Holy ghost. I'm going to send you to the place where I'm going to show you. He says, if you start moving, I'm going to make sense out of your movement. Huh? As you move, I'm going to show you where you're supposed to go. And maybe the problem is that you have not been willing to make the first move. And God hasn't been willing to make sense out of it because you haven't been willing to make the move. You got to make the move before the move makes sense. As you move, he's going to make sense out of it. As you move, he's going to adjust your vision. As you move, he's going to provide clarity. As you move, he's going to sustain the support. As you move, the Lord is going to give you the vision and the provision. As you move, he's going to make the way. As you move, he's going to make the development of the destination. He's going to start showing you that there's a place that I've already established for you as you move. Now, I've already written it in your future, but you got to be willing to get there as you move. I don't know who I'm talking to. That's as you move is on me. But you got to be willing to make the move. You got to make the move before the move makes sense. You have to trust God. This is what I love with what he is not showing you yet. Because sometimes what he's not showing you is the way to what he's trying to show you. You got to be willing to trust God with what he has not shown you yet. Because sometimes what he is not showing you is the way to what he's trying to show you. Faith, the size of a mustard seed is what moves mountains. You don't know how that mountain is going to move because all you see is this small level of faith, right? But you got to be willing to trust that if you just have that faith, that that faith can move that mountain. Literally, that is the definition of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. We know the word and the evidence of things that is not seen. You've got to trust what God is not showing you yet because sometimes what he is not showing you yet is the way to what he is showing you. Trust God in the confusion. Trust God in the conflict. Trust God in the chaos. Trust God in the storm. Trust God in the rain. When you don't understand what he's doing, trust God. You got to trust him with what he has not shown you yet. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the hearts of man. The great things that God uh, has prepared for his people. The way that he is sending Abram is a way that he has not seen yet. The way that he is sending Abram is a way that Abram can't even conceive in his spirit. When I tell you that what God wants to do with you is a now unto him kind of thing, I'm talking about exceeding and abundant kind of thing. The, the, the left, I could just go into this because I told you this has to be probably a series. But if we really start going into the level and the weight of the, the covenant that God made to Abraham, that's going to take us into a whole nother rabbit hole. But I just want to get into the whole understanding that had Abraham not trusted God in transition, he was going to miss the covenant that God was trying to make with him. He was not just going to miss the manifestation of it. He was going to miss the very proclamation of it. Maybe you haven't heard the fullness of the promise because you still positioned in a place where God ain't called you to. He says, go from out of your familiar place. And I'm going to take you to the place that I'm going to show you. As you walk, I'm going to develop it. As you walk, I'm going to make it make sense. As you walk, I'm going to show it to you. And here's what you got to learn how to trust God with. I trust that God ain't going to let me miss. I just need 131 crazy people to just write that in the comments. I trust God so much that I know God ain't going to let me miss. Oh, my God. We say that he is God 
who has ordered our steps. We say that he is God who has ordained our ending from our beginning. If you trust him like that, you got to trust that he ain't going to let you miss. That means that I'm incapable of missing it. If I just go, he going to let me catch up to it, even if I don't know what it is yet. <laughs> He going to let me run into it even when I don't even know what it is yet. And I'm just excited about smashing into the promises that God has for me. Because that's what Ephesians 9 and 11 tells us. The race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. But time and chance happens to us all. One day your time and your chance going to meet up. And before you know it, you're going to run into the place where God was trying to show you. Do you trust that God is not going to let you miss? So when you really ask yourself that question, do you trust that God's not going to let you miss? Maybe your question to yourself after that, or maybe the part, because I mean, you know, let me tell y'all, <laughs> I think that we can clear up a whole lot of the things that we deal with in our spirit. If we just really, uh, are real with God. I love the words of the hymn that says, Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. I carry so much to God in prayer that when I have one understanding of one thing, I have to go into the next. So my question to God is, all right, or rather my, 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 my conclusion with God, you aren't going to let me miss. So now why aren't you going to let me miss? What assurance do I have that God is not going to let me miss? Cause that's what I want. I want to be able to rest assured that God is not going to let me miss. Not only is he the, the, the author and the finisher of your faith. Not only is it that he who has begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of redemption. Not only is he the God who has already ordained your ending before the beginning, like all of that matters. Right. But let's watch what God says to Abram in Genesis 12, one, he says to Abram, I am going to take you to a place that I'm going to show you. And here's why he says, cause I'm going to make you a great nation. Then I'm going to make your name great. And then I'm going to make you a blessing to other people. So Abraham, Abram can't miss his destination because there is already a promise that is in place for Abram to do for others and to receive for himself. The Lord says, you have already been called to be a blessing to others. That's why you can't miss. He says, I'm going to make you a great nation, right? So first I'm going to fulfill you. I'm going to make you big enough so that you're not just pouring out to people and being a blessing to others and you ain't been fulfilled yourself. The Lord says, first I'm going to fulfill you. I'm going to make you a great nation. This is why you're not going to miss because I have something that I want to do in you first. Oh my God. This is why you can't miss where I'm about to send you because where I'm about to send you is going to be a blessing for you first. And then not only is it going to bless you, but it's going to bless the people who are going to know you. I'm going to make your great, your name great. I'm going to make your name great. And the reason why I'm going to make your name great is because I want people to be able to tell of the goodness that I've extended towards you. God ain't making your name great because he just thinks that you're so fancy. You're fancy, but he makes our name great so that we make his name great. That's why Abraham was the father of, that's what we call him, Father Abraham, right? Had many sons, many sons had Father Abraham. He's a father of faith. He's a figure in Christendom that we use because the, the works of the Lord that were mighty in the life of Abraham have extended down to generations and generations, meaning the Lord made Abraham great. But then when we read the story of how great the Lord was to Abraham his name is great in the earth because it glorifies the name of God we see the goodness of the Lord towards Abraham that is extended throughout the generations that means that God's promise has not failed he says I'm gonna fulfill you then I'm gonna fulfill the name that you have so that people understand who I've been to you and then I'm gonna fulfill you in a way where you can be a blessing to other people he says I'm blessing you to be a blessing God ain't gonna let you miss because you've been called to be a blessing to other people God is not going to let you miss because there are people who you are called to set free. There are people who you are called to save. There are people who you are called to pull out. And there are people that only you can reach and only you can impact. And let me just pause parenthetically right there because I think that there is a pressure in the social media era to make sure that you've reached people that are quantified through numbers and through likes and clicks. When the reality is there are people right in your churches, in your neighborhoods, in your families, in your houses that only you are called to reach. The Lord says, I got to fulfill you so that you can be a blessing and build others so that you can be a blessing to others so that you can be the one important to your family so that you could be the one that, that supports the community so that you could be the one to build back and, and better the, the, the black neighborhoods and the communities for minorities and the, those who are struggling 
children, those who are oppressed, those who are marginalized. This is the work that we are called to. And so God got to fulfill you first. That's why you can't miss it. That's why you're not going to miss where he's trying to take you. That's why when you start making the move, he's going to add value to your motion. Come on here. When you start making the move, the Lord is going to add value to your vision. When you start making the move, he is going to show you the depth of what he's created for you and the blessing that is on your life. And the funny thing is, sometimes you got to get out from where you are in order to see it. Sometimes, unfortunately, the people you're around hinder you from being able to see what God wants to do in your life. Abraham established his own family, his own covenant. He took his own life and created and established and took the, the name of his father and his family even further. You might be the first of your family that's called to the blessing. You might be the one that's called to make it bigger. You might be the one that's called to exalt the name of the Lord in the earth. You might be the one that the Lord is calling to, to be a blessing so that you can be a blessing to those around you. So the Lord calls Abram, calls him out. He calls him in a, in a, in a challenging way. He calls him in a way that to us, um, I think we should examine. I think that we should study. I think that we should learn from, we should take and We should be able to, um, apply. We should utilize it. Um, and we should use it as a place to strengthen our faith, to understand, um, that when God calls, he calls us uniquely. He calls us, um, in profound manner. He calls us, um, sometimes <laughs> unsure, unclear. Um, one of my old school Sunday school teachers, shout out to Miss Donna, uh, Shirella. She's one of my, our ministers from our church when I was growing up. She says, God doesn't call the equipped. He equips the called, right? And so that's something that I've been able to watch even in my own personal life, in my own development that um, I didn't always know. I didn't always have a plan. I didn't always know how it was going to work out. I didn't always know which direction I was moving in, but I trusted the discernment of the Lord enough to know that I was moving in the direction of destiny. And every season, the Lord has proven that as I trust him in transition, he develops me for the destination that he has before me. So I want to leave that with somebody today. And here are three prayer targets that I want to give to you from this, this lesson and this question that I want to challenge you with. Do you trust God like that? Um, pray these prayers. God help me to see the move. Abraham couldn't afford to miss it. Help me to see the move. The next prayer target is help me to make the move. Abraham could have heard the call and ignored the call and he still would have missed it. So God, I don't want to just see the move, but I want to make the move. And here's the last prayer target. God help me to trust you in the move. So this is the Friday night fill up. And I pray tonight that you have been filled up. We're going to take this even further next week and we're going to dive into it even more. And we're going to use it to um, be a springboard and a launching pad into the power of a promise, which I think is so prevalent on the life of Abram uh, and even into his transition to Abraham. So I plan on staying here in my personal study. And as long as I'm staying here, um, I don't have a choice to, but to bring it to my YouTube community because where else am I going? Right? So, Hey, this has been um, an awesome time. And y'all know, I say it at the end of uh, each session. If you like it, share it. If you love it, show it. And if it's been a blessing to you, go and tell it. Be a blessing to somebody else by passing this message on and being a witness in the earth. Listen, I got some things coming up this Sunday. You can meet me. I am going to be at the Rock Church Bay Area with Pastor Christopher Foster. You can log into their website and check their online times. And I will be there all day long. Excited to be out in the Bay Area this weekend. And coming up real, real soon, we're about to pop up in a DMV. And we're going to do a Friday night fill up live and in person. So we got some real cool stuff popping up. And don't forget, if you don't already have a copy of The Morning Cup, please Go to Amazon and make sure that you get that. So, hey, I've had a great time with you this Friday. I hope you had a great time with me. Let's pray. God, thank you for my brother, my sister who is hearing this message. Thank you for the power of their faith that is causing them to move and understand that you bring triumph through transition. So today, Father, for my brother, my sister, who may be on the edge and the verge of a move, of a shift in their lives, in their spiritual lives, within their families, within relationships, whatever area of their lives this message has met, I pray that according to your divine power and your divine majesty, that you would provide clarity, that you would provide wisdom, that you would provide the power of the Holy Spirit to give insight and direction, cause them to hear your voice, cause them to trust and believe that because you are God, we ain't going to miss it. We love you. We give you glory on and praise in Jesus name. I'm out. <laughs>